grow and get in the bedroom. Well, how many of you been out at night? Look up into the heavens and see the moon real bright. Remember doing that? See the stars? Any of you got a telescope at home? You do where well, you can watch it, look at the stars? Well, I want to tell you about that this morning. Psalms chapter 147, verse 4. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Now that is a lot. You can't even count the stars. Yet God placed every one of them where they're at. Just as He placed the world, the moon, the sun, He placed it all in the, in the, in the heavens. <coughs> and He named every star. God did that. That's how God's knowledge is far above ours. God is so knowing that he knew this morning every hair in your head. Can you count them? Knew? God can. And God knew every one that you pulled out when you brushed or combed your hair this morning. Every one that come out, God took that subtraction away. That's how much God knows. No saying, as Aiden said, God's behind every bush. God knows all about our life. But here's the good thing. Even though He knows, and He knows the good and the bad, He loves us enough that He saves us when we call on His name. Isn't that wonderful? That even though we might not know God, we may not do as God would have us to do, yet when we call on His name, in faith believing, He knows and He saves and He's all knowledge and he's all powerful and he's everywhere all the time that's God God is he just can't be any greater than God and then he put the stars there for us he put the Bible says he put the sun to rule by day so we'd have it and he put the moon to give light at night and the stars he did that so we'd have light because God knows one thing we're scared of the dark. You know, so God gives us light because He loves us. And the stars stay where they're at because God placed them there. Just like the earth. God placed it where it's at. So God loves you just as He loves anybody on the earth and the moon and the stars. God cares more for you than He does for us. Okay? Because He loves you. He knows all about us. Don't ever forget that, okay? Enough to know all the stars and the name. Look up tonight. If, the, if it's clear sky, look up. Look at the stars and realize that God put them there and got, it, got the names of everyone. And there's a lot you won't see because our eyes won't see them all. It's that name. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you loved us enough that you give us the sun, the moon, the stars to shine and to help us through our life and to help us to be not afraid and God to seek you and to realize, Lord, that all these beautiful things in the world that we see, you made them. And you made them just for us. And all the food, Lord, that's in the world, you uh, made it just so that we could partake of it and the water that it would quench our thirst. And we're thankful uh, for all of nature, Lord, that, that you made and you've done for us. And Mother Nature didn't do it, Lord, you did it. And we're thankful for that this morning. And we're thankful that you have the knowledge, Lord, to, to name every star. And Lord, that we can't even count them. And God, we give you the praise for all your goodness toward us. And we do pray. God, that you would save our lost when they come to that knowledge of, of right and wrong. We give you the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Are we still eating now? Uh,
constructive why do I need to do away with them and just have them? I hope that as our children grow up and get older that they remember the things from Children's Church and uh, try to, to uh, show them the, the power and knowledge of God. And uh, I know that I've run across a bunch of graduates from it and they, uh, they tell me, uh, some have told me that it's helped them in life the things they learn in children's church and I'm glad of that and I, I, I want to be a help to them I amen mean, they're God's children amen these little ones and if you got your Bibles turn with us to Jeremiah chapter number 29 Jeremiah chapter 29 now the children of Israel were uh, put into bondage for disobedience and uh, God has uh, uh, had Jeremiah to write a letter to those people that survived and were in Babylon. And uh, we want to read just a portion of that starting in verse 10. I think the whole chapter maybe is, is uh, or close to the whole chapter is the letter. Uh, but I want to read Jeremiah's letter which came from God, uh, starting in verse 10, and we'll go down through verse 14, and ask that you pray for us as we try to stand. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Now this is God saying, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. And He knows the thoughts that He has toward us uh, as well. And then He said, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your cap captivity, and I will gather uh, from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Now I want to use verse 11 uh, for a thought this morning, and uh, you pray for us as we attempt to preach the Word of God. If the Spirit will come and join with me, uh, it'll be a good message. And if you don't, uh, then it won't be worth anything. So we need the Spirit of the Lord uh, each and every time that we stand. We need uh, to be obedient to God and not to man. And we need uh, to get the thoughts of the world aside and think upon heavenly things and what uh, God would have. But in verse 11, For I know your thoughts that I think toward you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. So uh, that's what God has for us today. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, though there's evil in the world. And then it says, and to give uh, you an expected end. And that, I want to preach on that this morning, an expected end. I, just what I expect out of God. That, I begin to think back as this thought came to me yesterday as I was 
I was meditating on this morning and I, God I gave me this thought of, of the expected end. I, I, but we got to get there first. I, I, there's some things in the Word of God I, I, that God has said and I, that God has already done. And there's things that God's going to do I, on the expected end. But I, I'm reminded I, I, this morning, first of all, of the woman I, I, there in 2 Kings chapter 4, I, I, that her husband died and the creditors came to I, put her children I, in the bondage to pay I, I, the debt that their daddy owed. I, I, and God told her I, I, through the prophet said, I, you go borrow vessels I, and borrow not a few, I, I, but make sure the empty vessel. I, amen. I, and she went I, and borrowed vessels according I, I, to the Word of God. I, I can imagine some folks I, I, likes in the world today I, I, that was so tight that I, when they saw her coming up the road I, I, they said, here comes I, I, that widow woman hide the bread. I, amen. I, and all of that. I, I, but to their surprise, I, I, she asked I, for nothing but an empty bucket, I, an empty pot. I, I, why'd she do that? I, I, because God promised I, I, He'd fill it. I, and He did. I, amen. I, I, but this is the part I, I, that I want to get to. I, and I expect I, the same thing I, in my life. I, and I expect it I, I, because God said I, it's that way, folks. I, and I expect it because I'm saved by the grace of God. No other reason. Saved by the grace of God. I, and that woman, I, her husband was uh, one of the sons of the prophets. Uh, in other words, he was studying uh, the Word of God uh, under the prophets uh, in the Old Testament. He didn't know uh, uh, nothing about the New Testament, uh, uh, but they uh, uh, were under the law uh, and studied that. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, she poured. Uh, the Bible said when she got through borrowing uh, all the vessels uh, that she had the faith to borrow. And let me say that's key to what she's going to do. She borrowed according to her faith. And when she reached the limit of her faith, she didn't ask for any more empty vessels. But she took what she had and went back to the house. And the prophet asked her, said, what do you have? And she says, I have just a little bit of oil in the house. And the prophet says, you go in, you and your sons, and you shut the door. And in other words, the world is not going to see this. But you and your faith God's going to work a work inside that house. And he said, you take your empty vessels and you begin to pour out of your vessel. And she did. And she filled every vessel up to the rim. Every one that she had faith to borrow, she filled to the rim. And whenever she got the last one, the Bible said the oil stopped, or it stayed. That was it, as far as the oil. There was nothing wasted in God. Huh? Uh, but she borrowed huh? and got what she uh, believed that God would take care of. Huh? And God told her, and I love this part, huh? God told her, said, now you go and sell that. Huh? And you and your sons, huh? I pay the debt. Huh? Your husband lives. Huh? And you and your sons live off the rest. Huh? Amen. Huh? When I got saved, huh? I just didn't get saved. Huh? I got God for life. Huh? Amen. Huh? And I'm living off the rest. Huh? It's more than just salvation. Huh? It's more than just heaven. Huh? Amen. It's living down here huh? in this life. 
And we can expect God huh, to take care of us. Amen. Because He will. The Bible said uh, over there about uh, uh, the man that uh, uh, was left in the ditch half dead. Huh? And I'll say this to you this morning. Huh? Without the Spirit of God, you're half dead. Huh? Uh, there's a part of you huh, uh, that once was alive that's now dead. Huh? A man can be made alive again huh, by the Spirit of God. Huh? If you call on His name. Huh? Amen. Huh? You think you've enjoyed a few things in life? Huh? Huh? Try Jesus. Huh? Amen. Huh? He'll really take care of you. Huh? Like you did that woman. Huh? Huh? There with the oil. Huh? Huh? But this one. Huh? That is the tale or the, uh, the, the time. Huh? Uh, that the Bible said, huh, the Good Samaritan, we call it. Huh, uh, but first, huh, uh, there was a couple of men huh, uh, that went by huh, and dodged that man huh, uh, that was laying in the ditch. Huh. How many of us, huh, hey man, if we saw somebody laying huh, in the ditch on our way to church, huh, would stop and help him? Huh, or would we just go on? Huh, I'd turn our heads. Huh, uh, the other way. Huh? Uh, that's exactly huh? uh, what the men of God huh? uh, did. The Levite huh? and the priest huh? Uh, that was able huh? uh, to help this man huh? wouldn't even look on him. Huh? Hey man, as soon as they saw him, huh? they went around him. Huh? Uh, but the good Samaritan came by. Huh? He saw that man huh? and he huh? Uh, got off his donkey Ha <laughs> I took his oil I, and I, 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 I poured it I, on the wounds I, and did for that man I, as best he could. I, put him on his donkey and walked the rest of the way I, with him on it till he got to the end. I, and he put that man in there. I, took care of him that night. I, and this is the good part, folks. I, a man in this expectation I, should be of every child of God. The I, I, Bible said huh, uh, the next morning huh, when the good Samaritan got up, huh, went down to the innkeeper, huh, paid him what he owed him, huh, and said you take care of that man huh, and when I come back I'll pay you the rest. Huh? Amen. That's the concern huh, that Jesus has huh, uh, for every child of God. Huh? Huh, the Bible says huh, hey, consider the lilies, how huh? huh? they don't toil, how huh? huh? nor spin, huh? there's not a king huh? with more splendor than them, huh? consider the sparrows, huh? they don't plant their soul, huh? but they're fed by the master huh? who watches them grow, huh? hey man, that master huh? is our heavenly father, huh? and if you're saved, huh? you need that expectation huh? that God is intervening in your life and guiding you huh, along the way. Huh. You know what Jesus said? Huh? And it's a promise. Huh? He said to his disciples, huh, I'll go with you always huh, right. to the end of the world. Right. Huh? Amen. Huh? Huh, that's an expectation huh, right. of the end for me. Huh? <laughs> Amen. That he huh, is going with me huh, huh, to the end of the world. Huh? Hey, glory to God. Huh? Huh, not that I deserve it, huh? Huh, but because he wants it huh? Huh, that way. Huh? Huh, but he don't only want me huh, to have that expectation. Huh? He wants you huh, that are born again huh, hey, to trust in Him. Huh? He says, why are you so worried huh, about what you're going to eat, huh, what you're going to wear? Your Heavenly Father knows what you have need of Amen. even before you ask. And that's in Luke chapter 12. Brother Ricky read uh, one or two verses in his uh, Sunday school lesson. Verse 22, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, uh, what you shall eat, uh, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life 
is more than meat, huh? and the body huh, yeah. is more than raiment. Huh? Then he goes on to consider huh, uh, the lilies huh, and the things that uh, uh, he said there in his word. Huh? Hey, but it don't end there. Huh? Hey, there's some other things huh, how to go with. And I didn't talk huh, to Brother Ricky about this message. Huh? He didn't talk to me about it. Huh? I, uh, me and him and Chris, I, I didn't get together and decide the theme of today. Huh? Hey, man, it all came huh, from the Holy Ghost. Huh? It's where it comes from. Huh? Huh? Not a man. Huh? Huh? But over in Romans, huh? Uh, chapter number 8 huh? if you're not familiar with that book huh? hey get familiar with Romans 8 huh? uh, start in verse 1 and go to the end huh? because it starts huh? with no condemnation huh? and ends huh? with no separation huh? yeah. hey glory to God huh? I'm secure huh? yeah. in the Lord huh? it don't matter what Washington does huh? what they yeah. pass what they do, what they send down the pike. I'm a child of God and God concerned. And I expect God to take care of me just like He did all the other people in the Word of God. God left it to you and I so that we could read, understand, and have the same expectation in life. God wants you to expect these things of Him. He desires that you expect, amen, to have food, to have clothing, to have water, to have gas, to have what you need in life, no matter how high the inflation may go. If you're God's child, Trust in God. He'll make the way. I guarantee it. He'll make the way. He always has. He always will. I was called uh, 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 to preach revival over uh, uh, across the, uh, the mountain. I thought we Brother Humphrey. I, I pastored for years. I, uh, the name slips my mind right now. Huh? Uh, but it's up at the end of the valley in Pidal. Turn right and go up that huh, ungodly road. Huh? Hey man, that's narrow. Huh? Uh, that's rocky. Huh? And scare you without the Lord. Huh? You don't want to go up that thing. Huh? Hey, it's that bad. Look down at the telephone poles huh, while you're driving up. Huh? Uh, but anyway, huh, I was asked huh, how to hold revival. Huh? I got up huh, Sunday morning Bonnie said, how are you going to go? I, we don't have the money I, I, to go. I, I was to preach at Hickory Grove I, I, down I, I, in I, uh, uh, the Mount Zion Association that Sunday morning. I got through. I, my brother Leonard Herman kind of put some money in my pocket. I, he said, here you go, brother. I, I said, I didn't come to money, brother. I, he said, I want you to have it. I got home. I had enough to get me through. I, amen. Till the church took up a love offering. I, God supplies the way. I, hey, if we trust Him, I, God will supply our every need he asks how that we I trust him I give him the glory he asked that Herod lost his life because he wouldn't give God the glory for a speech he made and that's something to die for he made a speech and folks looked at him and they said why He's a God. Evidently some folks that knew, I don't know, but I read that he had the sun coming up behind him while he was speaking that morning. And it looked like he was kind of glowing as he spoke. And everybody said it's not him, he's a God. And he wouldn't give God the glory and God smote him down right then with worms took his life I don't know about you but that'd be an awful way to get eaten up with worms wouldn't it they many more squiggly things to get eaten up by them that quick 
Amen. It wouldn't be better to give God the glory than that to happen to us. Amen. But our expectation has got to be of God. Let's go on. In Romans, I was going to read this. The Bible says, and we know that all things work to the, for the good to them that know God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Folks, I can tell you some things that's happened to me. <coughs> my goodness. That's turned out to my benefit, even though it's been very painful. A lot of things in my life and in my body, yet God had a bigger plan than me. Right. And God worked it out. And as I look back, I see the hand of God right. guide me, bring me to this point in life, <coughs> calling me to preach the Word when I'm unworthy to even stand. But He called me to preach the Word and I said, God, I can't. God, I can't. But finally, I had to surrender to <coughs> preach the Word. But we're more than conquerors, amen, in this life when we give God the glory. And then it says, Moreover, them He did predestinate. For whom did He foreknow first? He did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's predestination. To be the child of God is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. That's the predestination part right there. God explains it there. That He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, He may also call. And them whom He called, He also justified. And whom He justified, then He also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can <laughs> be against us? That includes Congress. That includes Russia. That includes all the enemies in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who's going to bother you? Who's going to behead you? It won't happen unless it's the will of God. And if it's the will of God... God will make the way for you. Amen. You'll understand. You'll know. Amen. God will take care of you. And then he said, uh, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And then he goes on to talk about no separation from God. And he names everything <laughs> you can think of. And he says these can't separate you from the love of God. Nobody can separate the child of God from the love of God. <laughs> Why? Because God put it there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Nobody can get that spirit of God that dwells within you. Why? Because God put it there and he sealed it with his seal. And Brother Ethel Smith said one time, Satan's been trying to break that seal ever since God put it there, but he ain't even put a scratch on it. Think about that. He ain't even put a scratch on that seal. But we want to go on to a couple more places in the Word of God. It wouldn't be right to leave out of the expectation. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. He said... And we'll begin in verse 13 for the sake of time this morning. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that ye have not going to get, not may happen, not coming down the road, not going to happen at the resurrection, not going to happen when you get to heaven's door, not going to happen when you die and you leave this walk so alive, not going to happen then, but he said that uh, 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 that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Glory to God. You've got eternal life the moment you got saved by the grace of God. Whether you understand it or not, <laughs> you got it. 
Because God loves you that much. God loves you. And it says that here. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may believe. And this is the confidence or the expectation that we have of Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of Him. And so it goes on, even into the Word. He gives us more assurance of the expectation that we ought to have, folks. When you read of the promise in the Word of God, put it down. It's an expectation. God's going to deliver. God's going to fulfill every promise in the Word. Not to just a few, but to all the same. He's going to fulfill. Then if we go, <laughs> then if we go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, What I expect is going to happen to me in the future. I expect this. But I would not have you, starting verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye saw not, even as others, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's the spirits of every saint of God that went back to heaven because they're a saint of God. And when they died, the natural death, their spirit left their body huh, and went back to heaven huh, huh, to be with God. And Jesus has promised to bring them back. Bring them back. Then, even so, at verse 14, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And folks, I'm expecting to be alive and remain. It's that close. It's that close to the coming of the Lord. That's not the end. There's other things to go on. But I'm expecting God to come and get me. Amen. I am. And if He don't, I expect my spirit to go back to heaven whenever I do pass from this life. And I expect God to bring it back with Him. To reunite with a spiritual body. Amen. And then for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I expect that to happen. I hope you do too. I hope you expect that to happen this morning. Because it's going to happen whether or not we expect it. It's going to happen. But God's told us so that we can't expect it. Why did He want us to know? So that we could have a better life than this life. So that we could enjoy this life. If I had to worry about losing my salvation every time I turned around, I'd be miserable. I would be. I wouldn't know what to do. God don't say what you could do to lose it in the Word. He don't do that. That word that Jesus speaks about life, He calls it eternal. Amen. <laughs> so uh, how can eternal life get anything else except eternal? It's eternal because God is. It's eternal because God made it that way. It's eternal because God sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. 
One other place, and I know it's getting a little bit after hours this morning, but one other place I want to read. At least I'm getting it done today, not having to bring it over the next week, folks. So you get this and over with. All right. But I want to end with this. Maybe you want to mark it down. Philippians 1 and 20. Philippians 1 and 20. <laughs> According to my earnest expectation and my hope, <laughs> There is nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life <laughs> or by death. God's going to get the glory out of the same <laughs> one way or the other, whether by life or or by death. <laughs> Got to get the glory. And those that's going to stray will come back to it. Because Jesus leaves a 90 and 9 and goes and searches for how long? Until he finds it and brings it back on his shoulder. <coughs> Why does he do that? Because it's one of his. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What's your expectation this morning? You thought about it? What is your expectation? Is it in God? It can only be in God if you're saved. If you're not saved, you can't have an expectation in the God. These promises in the Word are for the saved. Not for the lost. They're for the saved. He did promise the lost that he would call. And he did say to the lost, Today, if you will hear his voice, pardon not your heart. You can get your expectation on Christ Jesus if you come to him on gospel terms. How's that with a broken heart and a contrite spirit? Seeking the Lord. That's being sorry for your sins and wanting to be saved. <coughs> saved from what? The sin of unbelief. That's the sin that you need to get forgiveness for. Because the other sins, you can't even remember. But God will forgive you for them. You can't even remember all the sins in your life. I can't. You can't. The Bible says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. Think about that for a while. Paul said, I die daily. As a Christian, he was saying, I die daily. I repent daily. Is what Paul was saying. Because of sin in his life. But it's the sin of unbelief that kept the children of Israel out of the promises of God. The sin of unbelief. It's the sin of unbelief that will send you to a devil's hell. The sin of unbelief. I know that's rough. I know that's... Uh, uh, hard, but it's the gospel truth. The sin of unbelief will send you to a devil's hell. If you believe in the Lord, you call on His name, asking Him to save you, He will do what He said He would. And then He'll make these promises to you. And that's the way it does. As we stand, and as we sing. I want to thank you for praying for me.